Okay, everybody, welcome back to another episode. Just joking, everyone. Uh, welcome back to tonight's Le Coup de Maran cheer. A few housekeeping, as always. Uh, the classes are up on the Breslov Research Institute website, on their YouTube channel, on their Facebook page, and all over, so you can check it out there. And for previous classes, if you're interested, you could check out my SoundCloud at Shia Sussman or Nach Daily at SoundCloud. We have uh, over 20 classes in depth, text based classes in Lukudi Maran so far. So uh, you could always check that out there. And now we'll kind of jump into tonight. Tonight, uh, we're learning further uh, in the piece we've been learning, lesson Ayin Ches in uh, Lukud Maran, lesson 78 in the second Chelek, in the second section known as Tinyana in Lukud Maran. And we're going to go further tonight. We'll either finish it or we'll come close to finishing it. But uh, either way, we'll give one more shear in it next week. And we'll wrap up some of the fine points and some other things. So if we don't finish it this week, either way, I wanted to give another shear in it next week. So we'll, we'll be wrapping it up. Uh, just a quick, tonight also we're going to learn about, this is in this lesson, is where Rabbi Nachman famously said, ancient Yish Ba'olam Klau, Yish, there's no such thing as Yish in the world at all. Yish doesn't exist. So we're going to, that's exciting to learn about this. These were his very famous words. And I always think about, you know, when he said these words, how many people were around, you know, ancient Yish Ba'olam Klau, never give up, you know, Yish doesn't exist. And there was only a few people around at that time. And for, he, he must have said it with such a, a slav, with such a brim, with such a power that those words, you know, reverberate for generations already, giving people such encouragement and making people feel so encouraged. So uh, I always wondered about, you know, I always think about the power over there. Uh, we're going to get into more what it means also and what it means in the context of our lesson also, because as we're learning about uh, there needs to be some flow over here. I didn't just say it randomly. So we're going to come back to that. And now to just do a little bit of a recap before we jump into the text. And then this way, we'll keep on going. Before we left over Shavuos, uh, Rabbi Nachman had int int were introduced this idea of the Torah Ne'elam, the hidden Torah, which means up until now, he's been dealing with the question, uh, how did the world exist prior to the Torah? And furthermore, how are you able to a person separate from Torah if the Torah is their vitality, if the Torah is their life force? So uh, he introduced this idea that there was something called uh, the hidden Torah, the Torah Ne'elam, that uh, there was a hidden Torah in the creation prior to the giving of the Torah. And uh, he calls that the Asara Maimaras, the 10 Maimaras that the world was created with. He also calls this the path to Eret Yisrael, the Derech Eret Yisrael. Uh, and th this is an amazing topic to Derek Eretz Yisrael. Hopefully in the next class, I really want to talk about Eretz Yisrael uh, within the context of this lesson as well. And uh, so we're dealing with, so he introduced this idea that there was this Torah, Torah Ne'elam, that there was this hidden Torah, right? That there's the revealed Torah that was given at Matan Torah with the Aseris Adibros. But prior to the Torah giving, of course the Torah was in creation. Like I think I just saw in Daf Yomi, and one of the Gemaras and Shabbos said that Moshe went up to uh, the angels said to Hashem, how can you give the Torah to man that was given, you know, 2000 X amount of thousands of generations prior to the world even being created. You had this Torah, right? So you're just giving it to man. So we see that the Torah existed prior to creation and that there's something called the, the Torah Ne'elam, the hidden Torah. And it's precisely through the hidden Torah that people were able to connect to God in their regular mundane activities, in their everyday life, in whatever it is that they were doing in life, even though they didn't have the mitzvahs in a revealed fashion, they were able to connect to the Rabboni Shalom through, through uh, this Torah Hanelam, the hidden Torah. So what we're seeing is, is that there's really a deeper dimension to the Torah itself, and that this deeper dimension of Torah is something that permeates, it totally permeates uh, the creation. It's a little bit of a detailed lesson, so I'm just trying to do the quick summary over here. This hidden Torah, this, this Torah Sanne'elam, 
is also not synonymous with Rabbi Nachman called the Otzer Matnas Chinam, the treasury of unearned gifts, the Hashem's Chesed Chinam, that Hashem created the world, the Chesed, with his great compassion, and he planted this Torah Ne'elam, this amazing light into the world which sustained all creation. Now, happens to be when a person, uh, Hashem made it that a person can't always stay on the same level, the same emotional level, and a tzaddik needs to fall, and we all need to fall, have yuridas, have ups and downs, which is part of the process of life itself, uh, is this way, because when a person falls, when a uh, tzaddik falls in specific, so he receives uh, from Hashem's Otler Mat Neschinim, he receives from this Torah Ne'elam, he receives from Hashem's amazing light of Chesed Chinam. That light now comes to him when he's in this simple, prostic, uh, lowered state of consciousness. And that light comes through him and it gets divvied out to the world. It's like uh, Hashem did this in his great Chesed because he wanted to give this light to the tzaddik and he wanted this light to be in the world. So that it comes out that this Torah Ne'elam, this hidden Torah, kind of gets revealed in the world when a person has a yurida, when a person falls, when a tzaddik falls. And this is, answers the question that we started with, which was a, uh, why did Hashem, how did the Torah, how did the world exist prior to the giving of the Torah? Which means there was this chesed chinam, there's this hidden Torah that was revealed in the world. And secondly, uh, how is it, why is it that Hashem makes it that the tzaddik or any human will fall to a lower level, a lower state of being, and have to separate from Torah at times in their lives? The answer is, is because Hashem wanted to use us or the tzaddik as a channel in order to divvy out that light into the world. And it's precisely when we fall, we're kind of merit to that light, that chesed chinam, that gets passed through us, and it gives out to the rest of creation. So now I think we're a little bit caught up now. That was the quick two-minute download. And now we'll jump into the text. Let me do the screen share and we'll kind of pick up from where we left off last time. So you can see over here, a highlight of the place. We're gonna pick up from over here, this green highlight. You guys could see the green eye, the Al Kane. Thumbs yep. up, thumbs up. Here, if I make it bigger, does that, that probably makes it better, right? Yep. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're going to jump right in because this is the third week in the class. So that for those who you are following, this should, this should all make sense to you. Okay. Of Alkane, Mukra Hatzadik Godo Leire Velipo Litok Pshitos, Yos Ish Pashut Mamish Ezaid. Therefore, Hashem made it that it has to be, it's necessary that the Tzadik will fall into utter simplicity to be Ish Pashut Mamish, to be, uh, I think a good translation for this is ordinary. Hashem made it that there are times in the life where the tzaddik will be ordinary. Because through this, he gives life and vitality to all these simple people. Right? Because since he fell, he receives a certain light, as we've been explaining, and that gets dished out to them. However that person is. Right, so he even Rabbi Nachman now goes even further that when the tzaddik falls, not only do the regular simple people receive their vitality from the light that comes through the tzaddik, uh, that Hashem gives out that light of chesed chinam, that light of unbridled kindness, even the Gentile nations receive, get their vitality through the tzaddik. Because the tzaddik is now, he's receiving from the Asura Maimaros and the Torah Ne'elam, this hidden light, this hidden Torah uh, that was put in creation prior to the Torah being given. So this Torah Ha'ne'elam, this hidden light that was in the creation, now, now uh, the tzaddik receives from that light and they, uh, it dishes it out to them, as we've been explaining. And every individual, according to their closeness to holiness, or to the tzaddik, so too, at that point, they receive, they receive a, uh, 
a greater vitality, right? So a person who is close to Kedusha, a person who is close to the Tzaddik and therefore a beneficiary of that Tzaddik's uh, light. So now they obviously get more of it, right? So it's simple. A person who is more connected to Torah, more connected to holiness, more connected to a... Uh, more connected to Hashem Zor is a person who's going to receive more of that. So whether that's by way of the tzaddik, I'm just fixing something on my camera over here, right? Whether that's by way of the tzaddik or whether that's by way of Kedusha. So, so like he's saying, right? So it's, it's an incredible, bold statement that he's making. And I, just, and I want to say very clearly, he's saying that the entire world gets sustained through the Yerida of the tzaddik, that the, that, the tzaddik is the one who merits to Hashem's ches and chinam, his otzer matnas chinam. And therefore, when he falls to this lower place, not only do other Jews and other ordinary people receive from that light, but even the umas ha'olam, even the Gentile nations, receive from the light of the tzaddik. And certainly anyone who's closer to Kedusha, they also receive from that light. Pretty amazing, right? Pretty amazing. Okay. The al came right here, back to the highlight. The Alkane, Moshe Rabbeinu, Alev HaShalom, and therefore Moshe Rabbeinu, Kisha Bikesh Lavo Le'Eret Yisrael, Bikesh, right? We're, we're tying in, talking about the Derech Eret Yisrael now. He kind of brings it full swing. The Alkane, Moshe Rabbeinu, Alev HaShalom, Kisha Bikesh Lavo Le'Eret Yisrael, when he requested to come to Eret Yisrael, Bikesh Matnas Chinam. He asked for Hashem's Matnas free gifts. Kemoshe Kasub, the Eschanan El Hashem, that it says that he, the eschanan, he uh, supplicated to God, bechinas matnas chinam. So you see, the eschanan has to do with free gifts. Bezehu beis hahu lemor, and this is what it means, right? At that time, hainu shatfila haya im koach bechinas beis hahi lemor. That mo he's going to talk around this in circles, but we'll come together. Hainu shatfila. That tefillah is, that Moshe's tefillah was with this, with the strength of at that moment saying, Hainu, Bekoach, what does it mean? Be'es hahi. It was, right? Ve'eschanan el Hashem, be'es hahi. He daven to Hashem at that time. What does it mean? Be'es hahi at that time, right? Hainu, Bekoach osa ha'esha olam miskayim al yidei asar maimaros. He, when Moshe said, when the Torah says, Veschanan el Hashem be'es hahi, it means Moshe davened for Hashem's matnas chinam to enter into Israel at that time. At what time? He's talking about referring, he wanted the power of the Asura Maros. He wanted the power of Hashem's chesed chinam, shehu koide matan Torah, which was before matan Torah. Because then the Torah was, the, the entire world was sustained through the Ted utterances, which was, is an aspect of the hidden Torah, as we've been explaining. And at that point in time, the world was sustained through Hashem's unbridled, uh, Hashem's free gifts. It's like everyone wants a free gift, you know? They'll even loot it. They'll take it, you know? Everyone wants a free gift. So Hashem is giving out these free gifts. Hashem is giving out his Otsar Mat Naschinam. And Moshe understood the secret, right? Moshe understood this secret that Hashem is giving out his Otsar Mat Naschinam. So it says, the Eschanan El Hashem. He asked for, Moshe has asked for Hashem's unbridled Chesed Chinam. Be'es Hahi, the Chesed Chinam that Hashem, his unbridled kindness, that Hashem used in order to sustain the creation prior to the Torah being given, right? Prior to the Torah being given, Moshe was relying on Hashem's unbridled chesed chinam. Go back to the screen share. Ubekoach, right here, Ubekoach hazeh shel kiyama olam kodem atan Torah, and with the strength of uh, this koach, the strength of this force of the world prior to giving of the Torah, Hashem's uh, treasury of unearned gifts, which is the Ten Commandment, Ten uh, Maimaras, as we've been explaining. 
And with this strength, a person is we merit in order to inherit and conquer Eretzisrael. The Alkain Bikesh Moshe Lavola Eretzisrael Aide Bichina Zu. And therefore, Moshe knew this and understood this, and he wanted to conquer Eretzisrael with this from this aspect. Vezehu Veschanan El Hashem, and this is what it means that he dove into God. Hainu Matnaschinam for Hashem's free gifts. At that time, saying, With the strength of what's known as at that time, when the world was sustained through Hashem's saying, because at that point, Hashem was sustaining the world only through His free gifts. And through his free gifts, your zoche to inherit Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, Moshe asked in order to inherit Eretz Yisrael through this aspect. And this is what it means at that time. Means it was totally hidden. Prior to Hashem giving the Torah, the Torah was totally hidden and it was planted away. It was maluvash. It was enclosed and incorporated in Hashem's saying, which corresponds to the Ten Commandments as we've been learning about. So this is an incredible thing. It's specifically when Moshe wanted to enter into Eretz Yisrael, that's when he asked for Hashem's Otsar Mat Neschinam. He asked for Hashem's treasury of unearned gifts, Hashem's light of unbridled, Hashem's light of unbridled kindness. So he knew that the secret of tefillah was to be eschanan, that a person shouldn't daven to Hashem, say, give me, give me, give me. A person needs to daven to Hashem, please give me all your chesed chinam. I know I don't deserve it. I know I'm worthless. I know I have many sins upon me. I know I don't do everything that I'm supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you're the creator of the world and you sustain the world. So please give me from your chesed chinam. Please give us from your otzer matnas chinam. We don't deserve anything. But yet, please give us from your, un, your unbridled kindness. And Moshe understood this. So Moshe was connecting to the Asar. When Moshe wanted to enter into Eretz Yisrael, he was connecting to the Asar Maimara Shenevra Olam. He was connecting to the Torah Net Lamas, the hidden Torah in creation, in order to uh, have his tefillahs answered. Amazing. Amazing? This is amazing. Uh. Okay, now, in this next piece over here, the, we're going to see where Rabbi Nachman says, again, his famous incredible words that he said, Ancient Yish Ba'olam Klau, that Yish doesn't exist. We're going to read it, we'll go through it, we'll talk about the connection, and we'll explain a little bit, we'll explain a little bit about what his awesome words meant. So I'm going to go back to the screen share. Let's go back to the screen share. Okay. The Hak Klau. You guys see that? Now, this is some good old-fashioned Breslau for Chizuk. There's no one like Rebbe Nachman for Chizuk. There's no one for encouragement, you know? I think, hold on, let me take off the screen share for a second. Oh, where'd it go? Hmm. Disappeared for me. Oh, there we go. I think a, uh, I think one of the chidushim, this is a little bit off topic, but I think, I think one of the chidushim where Rebbe Nachman was that everyone needs Chizuk. That even the biggest tzaddik, right? Even the Russia for sure needs chizuk. A simple person, an ordinary person, for sure needs words of encouragement. But Rabbi Nachman taught that even a gado, even a tzaddik, needs encouragement. Just like we're learning about that, and we've seen in other pieces before that Rabbi Nachman said, if someone would have, right? We learned in lesson forty-eight, I believe, that a, uh, if someone would have came and said, "Grab yourself." and encourage you, and hold yourself, and hang in there, brother, you know, it said it would have made all the difference in the world, you know, and that was really an exclusive chiddush, I think, of Rabbi Nachman, that he taught even someone who's a gadol, even someone who's a Torah giant, even someone who's a tzaddik, also needs chizit, as we were saying, that there are times that Hashem implanted in the creation that no one could stay on the same level, and even the tzaddik becomes ordinary, right, so if that's a tzaddik, for sure, me and you, for sure, me and you, we definitely need it, you know? But again, there's a, there's a special chiddush over here that even the tzaddik needs chizuk, 
which means you might think, oh, that person, they have their life figured out, and that person, they know what they're talking about, he's a tamachachim, or he's very righteous, and they know what's going on in the world, and they don't, what am I going to add to them? What am I going to, what am I going to give them? And Rabbi Nachman comes along and says, no, they also need encouragement. They also need words to lift up their mind. It's not that they have it all figured out per se, right? That it could be they have it even harder if they're always engaging in a process of spiritual growth. It means, as we've seen before, it means, it means they're always falling, right? So that's a, a, a person who you might view a, on a higher level as yourself, they also need chizuk. They also need words of encouragement. And I think it's, it's an incredible thing, you know? So I, I would say if you know any, any rabbis or anyone out there that people that you might view on a higher level, there's certainly nothing wrong in calling them up and saying, you could do this, you got this. Hang in there, you know, and certainly an ordinary person, a regular person, or a person, uh, even a person who's a Russia or anything, everyone needs encouragement. There's no one on earth that doesn't need encouragement. And as like uh, Rav Nussin used to say, this is an amazing saying of Rav Nussin. Rav Nussin used to say, uh, even a small guy can make a big fire. It takes a small guy can make a big fire. You don't need to be a uh, uh, you know, uh, know so much and be a big time Chacham and be so learned and be very high levels and, you know, precious and everything. But you could be a regular, ordinary guy and you can make a big fire. You could call this one up and you can give them encouragement and you can encourage yourself and you can encourage those people around you. So it only takes, even a small guy can make a big fire. Even a small guy can make a big fire. Okay, now we'll jump in. Vaklau. You guys see that? It is forbidden. It is forbidden to give up on yourself. I, I heard once a good, I heard from a Rebbe of mine, uh, my Rebbe, Rabbi Rothman, he told me that a good translation for Yish might be discouraged. Because a lot of people don't feel they've given up. But a lot of people feel discouraged. And discouragement is something that, you know, some people definitely feel they've given up. But other people... We feel discouraged, and we don't recognize that, that that's a form of yish, feeling discouraged to accomplish the things that you want in life. And the rule is, ki usr le yayish atzmo. It's usr to, it is forbidden to give up on yourself. Ki afilu mishu ish pasha ve'eno yachal lil mo klal. Even if you're a, an ordinary person and you're unable to learn at all. O shuhu b'makom shi'i afshar lo lil mo ukiyotzi b'zeh. Or if you're in a place where it's impossible for you to learn or anything similar. Af al right? Af al nevertheless, gam be'es pshituso tsarich lehachzik atzmo be'yiras Hashem u'be'avoda pshuta lefi b'chinasa. Nevertheless, even at the time when you're ordinary, when the time when you're removed from learning Torah and different things that you want to accomplish in life and you're at work or you're with the kids or you're stuck in traffic and you're like, oh, I wish I could learn, I wish I could do this, right? So nevertheless, you could still strengthen yourself with fear of God and simple avoda. Because even at that time, when you're simple, you're still receiving your vitality from the Torah. Through the great extraordinary individual. That means the big tzaddik. Who at times is simple. Like we've been explaining that he gives vitality to everyone. Even, even a person is on a very low level. Even if the person is in the pit of hell, which means a person is addicted to pornography, a person is addicted to drugs, a person, they're sinning, they're engaging in illicit behavior, right? They're failing at every moment. They're in financial debt. They feel like the world is completely against them. They are in the lowest of the low places. Rachman al-Islam. Af al nevertheless, al yisyayesh atzmo. Do not give up on yourself. The yikayim mi betun shaol shavisi. And we makayim, the pasuk, where it says in Yonah, from the belly of the whale I called out. The yachzik atzmo b'mashe yuchal. And strengthen yourself with whatever you could. Because since Hashem's chesed chinam, Hashem's unbridled light, is being revealed into the world through the tzaddik and is revealing the hidden Torah, you're able to connect to that as well. 
Va'ikr. Now here's where he says his famous words. Va'ikr lechazik atzmo b'chol ma she'efshar. And the main thing is to strengthen yourself with anything at all. Ki ein shum yiyash ba'olam klal. There is no such thing as giving up in the world at all. It does not exist. The Amar Az Bizalashan. And he said this in Yiddish. I'm not going to attempt to read that. Umashok Ma'od Ela Tevas Kain Yish. Right? And he emphasized those words. Kain Yish. Don't give up. The Amram Bekoak Gadol Ba'amkos Nifla Vinoir Ma'od. And he said it with such deep passion and fervor and wonder. To teach every individual for generations. To never give up for anything in the entire world. Even if whatever it is happened to you. Even if you fell to the place that you fell. Lashuv Lachsor be Alav Yisbarach. Incredible, incredible, right? So let's just to recap. So Rabbi Nachman saying that even that no matter where a person finds themselves in life, no matter where, how far fallen a person is, a person, they did keep Shabbos, they don't keep Shabbos. Sometimes they turn the lights on, sometimes they don't turn the lights on person didn't put the filling on, a person didn't dive in, a person was addicted to pornography, a person's addicted to prostitutes, a person's addicted to drugs, to heroin, to, uh, to gambling, to internet, to having all different sorts of averas, the worst averas that you could think of in your entire life, and even not the worst averas, even regular things. A person feels like they want to establish, uh, reach a certain financial stature, a person wants to have shalom bias, a person wants to have a nice family, a person wants to get along with their kids, they want to get along with their parents, they want to have good relationships with people, they want to get along with their wife, right? They want a shidduch, they want all sorts of things in life. And no matter where a person finds themselves in life, never, ever, 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 ever throw in the towel. As Rabbi Nachman is saying, Yish doesn't exist. Yish doesn't exist, right? And this, this fits in the general theme of the lesson that he's saying that because when a person falls, the Torah, there's a Torah in the Lamas. There's a hidden Torah in the creation. So when a person feels that they've missed the boat and they can no longer connect to God, you should know that Hashem's chesed chinam is otzer matnas chinam his revelation could be found even in the lowest of the darkest of the darkest in the darkest of places. Uh, even in the middle of the riots, a person could find Hashem. Rahman al-Litzlan. You shouldn't riot, but Rahman al which means a person can come close to God no matter where they find themselves in life, no matter where they're up to. And a lot of people think that, and I see this in my practice all the time, that people think Yiddishkeit is all or nothing. People think Yiddishkeit is I do everything or I don't do anything, right? Either I put the filling on or I don't put the filling on, right? Either I'm a sinner or I'm a saint, right? Either I'm addicted or I'm not addicted, right? Either I drink alcohol or I don't drink alcohol, right? Either I look at this or I don't look at this. There's no in between, you know? And what Rabbi Nachman's teaching, uh, part of what he's teaching is that there's gray area. It's not all or nothing, it's not all or nothing. If you miss the day of tefillin, you could put on tomorrow you tefillin, right? If today you looked at something you shouldn't have looked at, an hour from now, you don't have to look at the thing, right? If today you fall into the lowest place, it's not all or nothing. If you didn't give tzedakah until now, you could give tzedakah, right? If you didn't daven with a minion, you could daven with a minion. If you got entangled in a horrible relationship, you could make amends. You could have a change of heart, right? It's not all or nothing. And so many people uh, that I used to think this too until, I, until I'm learning what we're learning together that, you know, either you do it or you don't do it. And Rabbi Nachman's teaching that there's gray area. It's not black and white. Do whatever you could do. Even if you're sinning against God at every moment, there's still something you could do, right? There's nothing. Right? Even if you can't do anything, you could still long to come close to Hashem. 
Even that's an amazing thing. You could strengthen your gaguum and your longing to come close to God. So it's not black or white. And what happens is, is I think that people have this, they split. This is good. This is bad, right? And they make this black and white, good or bad, sin or saint type of split. And then they think God hates them and they feel guilty about everything. And they have all these distortions around God and the reality that they're living in. And basically it causes them to further down the pit, right? It causes a person to fall further down the pit because now that you sinned, right? What do they say? The expression goes, more than the Yetzirah wants the Aver, he wants the Atzvut Minah Aver. More than the Yetzirah wants you to sin, he wants you to feel bad after you sin. Oh, now you're a sinner. Now you don't have to do anything. Okay, towels out, over, you know? So it's incredible. It's an incredible thing. A, uh, I, I also want to explain this a little bit over here. Got orange juice. Happy about orange juice. Hey, uh, also to explain a little bit over here, th to give it a little bit more of an explanation, is that Rabbi Nachman, if he really, it, it's interesting. He said, uh, I'm going to take a stab at this question. This is kind of a famous question on it. He said, ain't shum yish ba olam klau. Despondency, giving up doesn't exist in the world at all, right? But it's really counter to a person's experience right? Because a person feels that they have given up. And if you look around the world, you'll see all different sorts of types of despondency and yish in the world. So how could Rabbi Nachman come along and say, shum yish ba olam klal. there's no such thing as yish in the world. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit counterintuitive. And furthermore, like, what did he, what did he really mean when he said this, obviously? So I'm going to take a stab at this. I actually asked this question to a few people the other day. I got back different answers, but I'm going to throw my hat in the ring to answer this. That what happens is, is that, that, you know, Rabbi Nachman says in another place, he says, uh, the main thing is a person's mind, right? The main thing is, is a person's mind. And a person says, I've given up, I can't accomplish, or I won't be able to attain the things that I want to attain in life and they fall lower and lower and lower, right? So where does that take place? Where, where does that take place? It takes place in your mind because your entire experience of life is being created from your mind's eye, from the power of thought. It's being created from the inside and from the power of thought. So if you, if you could touch your brain, would you be touching your mind? Let's say you drilled a hole in your brain, a hole in your head, with a corkscrew, right? And now you touched your brain. Would you be touching your mind? Would you be touching your thoughts? The answer is no, you wouldn't. Why? Because the power of thought is spiritual. Your mind is spiritual. It's not toughest makum. It's ruchnius. A person's mind, a person's thoughts don't take up any space, right? If I, a question, if I can just ask everyone to mute themselves a little bit. Getting some feedback. Okay, here we go. Right, a uh, if a person, I ask this to my clients a lot. If you, if I take out all the thoughts in your head and I put them in this room right now, how much room would it take up? So they say, oh, take up a lot of room, right? Uh, the answer is no. It would take up no room because you can't touch them. It doesn't take up space, and poof, it's gone. Right. So a person gives up, a person feels miyayesh, it doesn't exist. This exists, kind of, right? The physicality is something I could grab, right? My microphone over here, I could grab it. But my mind, I can't touch it. So a person has thoughts of giving up, a person has thoughts of yish, ain't shum yish ba'olam klau. Yish doesn't exist. You can't touch your thoughts. And poof, it's gone. And poof, it's gone. I think it's incredible. I think it's incredible. I love this. I love this, you know? Because so many times a person gets into an emotional state. I could just say for myself, you know, you get into a state and then you're like, oh, this isn't going to work out. Or you become negative about certain things and you start fetching and complaining or you feel really down or you feel like you're in emotional turmoil 
and then you say, well, there's no use trying, right? But there's no place that you could touch that there's no use trying. It's something that, it's an inside out experience. It's something that takes place only within your mind's eye, only from the power of thought. And then you think that, you feel that, and then you see that. So the entire world now looks full of despondency. I like to say, uh, you know, your thoughts are you know, like your sunglasses, like whatever running through your mind at that time, that becomes what you see in life. And that becomes not only what you see in life, but that becomes your entire experience of reality. As I like to joke around, Shia, uh, when I'm feeling Shia in a bad mood is different than Shia in a good mood, right? Because your entire experience of life gets filtered through your mind's eye and you wind up seeing how you feel. And Rabbi Nachman is saying, which means however you're feeling right now, it doesn't take up any space. You're having a temporary moment experience, right? That might be what you're feeling, but it doesn't really exist. It's something that you're experiencing because that's, what you're, that's what's coming through you in that, mo in that moment. So there's no actually place that you could touch of of yush. Well, couldn't you say that about everything, about any feeling? I mean, like if Rabbi Nachman's going to say ancient yesh, and it's going to be because, oh, it's only just a feeling, then you could say ancient simcha. And and show anything because it's all just part of your human uh, mind experience. Huh? Part of your human mind experience. So I'm going to repeat the question over here. What's being asked is, is it possible to say that about all human emotions in general? Uh, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think that's what he's saying. He's not saying that the person can can be yish. He's saying he, sh he shouldn't be yish because there's no point in being yish. You can just as easily be positive because there's no there's no substance to the hopelessness. So if there's no substance, it's going to affect you if you're hopeless. But why be hopeless if you can just as easily choose to be happy? Why be hopeless if you? That's what he said. I think Ellie. I think you're right about that. I think that's what I that's what I was thinking also. Right, like. It's unproductive. So if, you, if you, you have the option, you could take the blue pill or you could take the purple pill, right? If you have the option, A or B, A is going to lead you down a path of destruction and you see no way out of it. B is going to lead you to productivity, feeling happy, feeling content, feeling the simcha. What are you going to take? Which one are you going to take? You'll take B, right? But if you don't see it as a realistic option in order to take, in order to stay away from Yish, so then you just spiral downwards and downwards and downwards and downwards until you keep falling and falling and falling, right? So a, uh, this puts it back on the map that the possibility for a person not to be Miyayish to show you that it's a, pro it's a figment of your imagination, right? It's a fig and, and, and Tani, you're, you're right, in a certain way, in a certain way, in a certain way, you know, all of life is, we spoke about this one time, all of life is but a dream, right? In a certain way, right? The, the Chazal called Olam Hazeh, the Olam de Sheker, the world of falsehood, right? Which means in a certain way, uh, we are living in a big lie. That's what Chazal said. We're living in the grand illusion, right? Jokes on you, right? And we take things very personally and very seriously and things like that. So we're like a, uh, you know, I heard Rabbi Re'edi say last night, I was listening to a class of him and he said, like, if I'm only looking at the camera lens and I think that's how big life is. So you're hyper-focused on certain things. But when you see it's a big illusion and you see the bigger context of life's happening, so then you're able to take things in stride. Now, we don't see, even if we have a big vision, we don't see the ultimate context of life that's something that Hashem is going to show us one day by Yomahu on that day Hashem is going to show you right it says a uh, right there's lots of chazals about this the Rabbi Kiva went to Shemaim and said why are you why are you torturing everyone the Sari Ruge Malchus and Hashem says back you know if you're going to ask me this how the Sari the, how the 10 people are killed the Sari Haruge Malchus are killed I'm going to turn the world back to Tohu which means like I'm going to have to unravel the creation from the beginning of time to show you how somehow in the divine scheme and mind of things, how this actually makes sense. And it's a good thing, right? Like we only see the small context. So there is definitely truth to that, that the entire world 
the, the entire world is an illusion, you know, the, the, the entire world. But uh, I can at least say for myself, as an ordinary individual, like we don't, I definitely don't see that, you know, it looks real, it feels real. And, you know, uh, you definitely, definitely don't see that on like my, my daily life experience for sure, you know. But I think this thing of giving up of ancient Yish, that it doesn't, that it doesn't take a place, you know, I think that's something that's easier to, at least for me, to steer me on the right course when you're fe- on those days, uh, hours, days, weeks, months, years, where a person's feeling, a person's feeling totally, totally, totally down. You know, uh, this, yeah? This, I, don't know if you, I, I wanted to, if you don't mind me adding. Um, Go for it. I, Rabbi Moshe Wise, he once, one of the shirim we talked about, we say in Davening all the time, Yi chasaka Hashem Aleinu, Hashem Yi chasaka should be upon us, Kasho Yi Chamalach, as much as we hope for it. And as we, we have to hope for his chasaka. And then, and then the chasaka, like everything is free from Hashem, everything is chasaka. There's no, that, that we, we don't really deserve anything. But, and therefore Hashem can give us anything since we're counting, like you said, on, his, on, this, on, this, on the freebies. So if we're counting on the freebies, but it's Kasho Yi Chamalach, as much as we hope for it. If you don't hope for it, if you don't think Hashem is going to come through, we don't just say, Yichatz Hashem Aleinu, period. Give us chesed. We say, yeah. Kasher Yichamlach, as much as we hope for it. And this is, what I think, what you're saying. If, you give a, if you're Yish, if you're Yish, then what are you hoping for? There's nothing to hope for. But if, even when things are tough, you still try and Hashem can fix this. Hashem, not that, not that there's no problems in the world, but Hashem wants us to deal with problems. But at the end of the day, we still have to try and keep, keep that optimism. Doesn't mean, that everything, doesn't mean that life is easy, but, but to be optimistic is, 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 is key because the, the, the more optimistic we are, the more chesed Hashem will throw at us. The, 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 I like what you're saying, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add on to what you're saying, Ellie, that hope is one of the most basic functions, of, <laughs> of most basic human emotions is hope. You know, how many people feel, you know, uh, and, you know, ourselves like, there's no hope, right? When a person feels hope in their heart, they instantly feel uplifted and able to tackle the same difficulties in their life. When a person feels hope in their heart, a person instantly feels stronger to deal with their life circumstances, which means, you know, they say life's a full contact sport. It's meant to be played. But if you're hopeless, you're always going to feel like you're losing and you're always going to lose. But if you feel hope in your heart, you feel that Hashem is on your side, that there's chesed chinam, that Hashem is rooting for you, and that yish is a construct of the mind. So you'll now do and make the difficult decisions that you need to in life. But if you're hopeless, you know, I'm thinking, I'm just reflecting on like so many of my clients, you know, they daven for and everything that you know, they feel hopeless, you know, but once there's a flicker of hope, there's a glimmer of hope, you know, one flicker connects to another flicker, connects to another spark, another spark before, you know, you have a fire and a person now could lift themselves up out of, out of a, uh, whatever they're dealing with, you know, like in the 12 steps, the first step is in AA, one of the first steps is that you have a higher power, right? And only your higher power could restore you, which means like, a person reaches rock bottom and they look towards God and they say, you know, I have a higher power. Like I could be restored. You know, they start to feel hopeful, you know, and when you turn towards God and you know that Hashem is with you, even in your low place. So a person starts to feel hopeful and now they feel, you know, they feel a little bit that they could accomplish. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move on to the, uh, the Parsha connection for this week. Parsha connection. Okay. Uh, this week's Torah portion is Parsha's Nasso. So it opens up like this. Hashem uh, said to Moshe, saying, Nasa es Rosh Bnei Gershon. Take, uh, I'm reading the Arsko translation over here. Take a head count of Bnei Gershon, of the sons of Gershon. Ki gam heim lebeis avoselim mishpachosam. Also them, according to the household of their fathers, according to their families. Like, they're also part of their families. So, also count the Bnei Gershon. 
okay, in order to go into the Voda. So you can read it like this. Uh, I heard this from Rav Moshe Weinberger, actually. Lift up the heads of the Nei Gershon. What is Gershon? Gershon comes from the word Gerishin, uh, to be divorced or to be cut off, to be separate, right? They too are also part of the family. It means the Bnei Gershon, the people who feel totally cut off from God, that a person feels total gerishin. They feel Hashem doesn't listen to them. Hashem doesn't care about them. They've lost their way, and they can never, ever, ever come close to God. They're completely hopeless. They've given up. They have tremendous amount of yish and don't feel hope in their heart. Lift up their heads. Lift up their heads. Why? Gam heim. They're also included. Lebe Savosam In the house of their fathers, Lemishbachosim. They're also included by Hashem. They're also part of the camp. They're also part of the Jewish people. Gam Haim, even the Bnei Gershon, even the people that are furthest from Kedusha, and even us at times in our lives when we feel the furthest from Kedusha. Even then, Gam Haim, Lebeisavosim, they too are also part of the family. They're also considered Banu Matem Hashem Elokecha. They also have a Nakuda Tova. They also have good. They're also being sustained through the tzaddik gadol that we started with. It's like I was doing his spite of this the other night. And uh, I was thinking, I'm like, wow, I'm be- it made me so happy because I was thinking, I'm like, wow, I'm being sustained now from the light of the tzaddik. Isn't that incredible? Whoa, you know? And I felt so happy from that. I felt so uplifted that like an ordinary lowly person like myself is being sustained from the light of the tzaddik, right? <laughs> Right? Nasuis Rosh Bene Gershon. Lift up the heads of the people that are furthest away. Gam Haim Lebeis Avosam Lemishbochem. Because they too are part of Klai Yisrael. They too are part of the Jewish people. That no matter what you're up against in life, no matter how many times you've sinned, no matter how many times you've messed up, no matter how many times you've made deals with Hashem and said, I'm not going to do it again, and then you go back to doing it. Right? Gam Haim. You're also part of the Jewish people. You're also part of Klai Yisrael. You're also considered. Hashem's children, no matter what you do, the longing that you have, the, the battle, the struggles that you have, Hashem loves them. Hashem loves them. And never give up. Never, ever, ever, ever. Ancient Yishbol and Clown, never give up. Never give up. And they, uh, that's the end of the year. People want to add their comments, questions, comments, letter to the editors. I'll give a. Yes. Yashkov was very good. I just got to run to another meeting. But Yashkov, have a great Shabbos. Thank you. Have a good Shabbos. Have a good Shabbos. Ain't shum yeish bolam. Sing it. Ain't shum yeish. Ain't shum yeish. Ain't shum yeish baolam kla. Rabbeinu shag bekol gadol. Ain't shum yeish. Ain't shum yeish. Ain't shum yeish. Never give up. Never give up. Ever. All right, beautiful. The Chavez Sussman family. Chavez, everyone. Chavez, Chavez.